Hey everybody, it's been a, a little while since I got a video out, but um, life is, uh, has been busy. Um, working on a house, uh, taking care of two little girls uh, that are uh, not four years old yet, either one of them. Uh, life's just been busy, so lots going on, and I apologize for it being so long if you have been waiting for this, as, as I promised in my previous one. So this is video number four from my uh, all-terrain mo-kart uh, build and the, the machine itself sitting behind me here in the shop is, hasn't moved for a while but that's mainly because I've been waiting on shooting this video to uh, get this rear end back under it so this is the real short update on the conversion of the peerless uh, MST-205 out of the wide body Murray to go in my Craftsman LT or is it actually an LTX but uh, LTX-1000 uh, so, you know, they're both MST rear ends, the castings are the same, but what you get is differences in the brake lever, um, or excuse me, the shift lever, the brake lever, uh, pulley setup, etc. So, now, and I talked about belt diameters and pulley ratios in my previous video, and this is that, that uh, four and a quarter inch uh, pitch diameter pulley that, uh, that I showed and talked about before, and I, I believe I misspoke in that other video, I called it diametral pitch, but it is pitch diameter where it's five inches on the outside but really uh, four and a quarter inside at the center of the belt contact patch. So um, the whole theme of this project is doing this to spend as little as money as possible. So I did buy this pulley. Uh, I needed to build a belt guard to hold it on. So I took the existing one off the Craftsman, uh, got creative with my paint marker to mark locations uh, where I needed to make bends. I uh, took it with a pair of channel locks, a uh, crescent wrench, and my vise, and reformed this guard to ride close enough here to contain the belt should it uh, get loose well it will get loose when this when the clutch is depressed so um, we'll see for sure yet if that's going to work it can be tweaked and bent a little side to side as needed uh, once it's in the machine assuming it'll work so uh, you know other, other things I've changed was the uh, the brake lever here this is the brake lever out of the Craftsman so the linkage where it attaches is different than the Murray um, but the casting and the, the cam pins and everything right in here uh, bolt locations into the ca casting for the the transaxle itself they're the same so you swap just swap the lever out and of course sand and grease up the uh, cam pins and the, uh, the linkage down in here while you've got it apart just to say you're having a seized up brake later um, now we're we're going to overspeed this rear end considerably, um, which you know it can be done. But in any time you've got an, uh, an oil-filled gearbox, you got to consider uh, pressure building on the gearbox due to heat, and that's why rear ends have vent tubes and and uh, transmissions have ventilation tubes and, and things like that in automobiles and industrial off-highway equipment and everything. Uh, these don't have that, but this one does. And if you notice right here, I've got a brass hose barb. Now that is the drain fill, or the, excuse me, the oil fill plug. Um, the uh, I put a uh, one quarter inch pipe thread brass fitting in there with a one quarter inch hose barb. So I'll use a piece of fuel line. I'll attach it up here, um, you know, with a with a clamp. And then I was originally just going to make a loop up underneath the bodywork uh, and then zip tie it. I uh, got a good idea from Doc Sprocket on his Murray build video just to stick a fuel filter in here and let that be a filter and breathing uh, apparatus keep the dirt and stuff out and so I'm probably going to go ahead and do that and use the fuel filter idea but that will be the ventilation here now because we've approximately doubled or tripled the speed of the input shaft here on this rear end so the the gearbox itself is turning two or three times faster than it was meant to turn and with oil filled uh, you get oil fling you get heat build up you have to do something to keep it from blowing out seals or just pushing the oil and stuff out through the axles over time. Now this was a bit tricky. This hole in these mirrors is a little bit bigger than you really want. This, uh, this Here's my, my pipe tap and it says right on there use a 7 16th drill. Um, that hole is quite a bit bigger than 7 16th. Uh, it's fairly close to being too large but with a proper amount of thread tape and a light tightening with a small crescent wrench I think it's going to hold just fine considering it's only a vent tube. Um, if it doesn't, I have not ruined it for putting the uh, the original plug back in. I can do that, and if I have to, oh, and drill somewhere else uh, and put and relocate this in this area over in here, because below here is the shifter fan, but this is a good sized cavity uh, in here inside the rear end where there are no gears. So um, with that, this thing's ready to go in the machine. Um, uh, you know, as I talked about before, I did. 
uh, raised the body one inch with some one inch blocks. Um, the Craftsman rear end originally had a shifter linkage that sat here, came over and up and out like this. So it's going to be maybe inch, inch and a quarter below where this is. So it should work out real good because originally it was here, now it's here, and the body has moved up as well. So we'll see. And the linkage being that it's a ball and socket linkage should have considerable amount of, of uh, adjustment this way to, to make up for any, any, any imperfections there in, uh, in my design my cheap design. <laughs> um, can't stress cheap on this, this project. So that's about the size of it. Um, I got to put it in there. got to see what's going to happen and uh, take the thing out for a test run. It's uh, It's been sitting in the shop way too long. Uh, got front tires for it and I got to get some back ones ordered and, and we'll get it out of here. But the big things are here is, is, is reusing the existing materials here for the belt guard. Uh, reusing the existing linkage off the Craftsman rear end, turning it over and attaching it to this taller stem for the Murray and reusing the Craftsman brake linkage. Now the only problem I foresee here is that, I don't know if you can see it, but when this belt comes straight off it's nearly contacting this. I may have to add an idler pulley just to route it like so just to get it to clear. Um, you know originally the pulley set way outboard because it was a oh, what, an 8 inch to 9 inch diameter pulley would, brought the belt all the way out around the shifter linkage. So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know yet about that, but that, that is, comes with the territory. When you start changing belt sizes in, it just moves the, the or uh, pulley size, excuse me, and it just moves the belt uh, to potential interference points like this. We'll deal with that uh, once it's in the machine. But I'll do some more videos. Um, uh, the next big one I've got planned uh, is a, a dead man throttle, an automotive style throttle set up to get rid of the governor linkage and all that. It comes on these uh, single cylinder Briggs motors that uh, that we like to use because they're cheap and they come in these lawn tractors. But uh, I built one a few years ago for a pulling tractor. It works great. And that's the next video is uh, a, uh, a low cost throttle that really works and is very reliable using all motorcycle and uh, hardware store parts. No gluing things on the end of the cable and stuff like I've seen people do, which I just can't see being anything but a problem in reliability. So that's it. I um, hope this is uh, some help to you. And um, this will be in the machine and going fairly soon. And I will do my best to get another video sooner than the months that have gone by since the one before this. So Ultrain Mo Kart video number four. Um, transaxle's done, ready to go in. And hope you like it. See you guys.